Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports soccer podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster for CBS Sports. On today's episode, we have a special interview episode for the NWSL playoffs ahead of the quarterfinals. A quick reminder to leave us a five-star rating and review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And you can also head on over to our YouTube page and hit subscribe at youtube.com slash attacking third. Today, we are joined by Chicago Red Stars defender and Orland Park's finest, Tatum Malazzo. <laughs> How you doing today, Tatum? I'm great. I'm so excited to be with you guys. I'm excited to see where this conversation goes. I'm excited <laughs> to be here. <laughs> I love it. I'm uh, I'm so happy that you uh, are joining us today. You know, I had, to, I had to get it in. I had to shout out your hometown. Uh, that's a common thread amongst uh, some Chicago Red Stars players who are affiliated with the team. Got to love the uh, the homegrown kid. Um, but yeah, we're, we're so happy to have you here joining us on Attacking Third, your first time with us on the episode. Um, I guess let's let's get the the elephant out of the room, right? Let's get that out of the way right now. First, I want to ask you, how are you doing this week? Um, what's it been like uh, being with your teammates and uh, having to prepare for a quarterfinal match in light of all of the um, headlines around the Yates investigation? Yeah, I feel like, as you guys can imagine, it's been a really heavy week. I mean, just I feel like a heavy year. I feel like there's so much that has come to light within the last year that so many players have had to deal with or felt personally affected by or had best friends or teammates affected by this. And so I think just another part of the year where it comes around and you're like, kind of got to deal with this again. Um, but I do, we're really appreciative of our staff here lately. I feel like last week was very, if you need this time, you take it. It's very, um, take care of yourself mentally. So I feel like it's been a really healthy environment for us. Um, but again, we all wanted to be here with each other. Cause I feel like that's the best support system because you relate to it. Um, with everyone. So it has been a hard week, but I think we're also given the statement we gave and everything that's kind of moving right now. I think we're ultimately excited. We have a really exciting game coming up. And I think just the future of the Red Stars is looking optimistic and we're really excited. Tatum, that is so good to hear about the optimism and of the future of not only the Red Stars, but the league, um, because it has been a challenging week, month, two years uh, in this league and, and for women's soccer fans. But uh, Chicago is a very resilient group, and we've seen that, whether it's on the pitch, off the pitch. What did you specifically learn about your team this year um, in, in what they were able to do on the field? I think even given the last two years, now knowing all the background and having experienced everything, the work that the players put in every day and to come in here with their personalities and giving everything they got, I think given the circumstances of everything else, the performances and the environment from the team have been unbelievable. It's been a great environment as players. I think that's what's been the easiest part um, and the best part, I think. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what's gotten us through. And I think that's been inspiring to me to be able to see the older girls that have dealt with all this stuff for so long. And they this is our seventh year going to the playoffs. So I think that's a really kind of like statement to the team. Like we really can push forward. So I think that's even exciting to the point where once we do get that money and the support system from an ownership and everything else that kind of comes into place, it'll be really exciting to see what we can accomplish with all of that. You know, Red Star's resiliency is is a thing that um, has often been like, you know, talked about when you're looking at the players or like covering the the, the team and they're in the roster. Um, with You mentioned the, the statement that the, the players put out recently. Um, you talk us through that a little bit in terms of um, having to go through um, you know, the, the week and sort of was, was it planned to sort of just sort of take time to be with it and then sort of come together and then release a collective statement? Yeah, I think we all wanted to take time and kind of feel everything for ourselves before we wanted to put something out there that maybe was not how everyone felt or was rushed or something. So I think we wanted to really nail that and get everyone's feelings out into one statement where we can all share this statement and feel like this is me, this is my teammate, like all this kind of stuff. 
Um, so after last week we met with the board and then I think the players came together and we were just like, let's all send a couple points in bullet points, whatever you guys, you can write a paragraph, however you want to do it. And then we'll kind of put something together with everyone's thoughts. Um, and then the plan just to release it all at the same time. So I think that was also shows the power of the team. I think we really have powerful words and feelings that I think we are finally ready to not only just put out onto the field, but to make this place a better um, environment for everyone here. Collaboration is uh, is key, right? Yeah. Um, let's chat a little bit, let's pivot a little bit. Let's let's talk about soccer. Let's chat about some Chicago right. soccer, right? Uh, 22 game season this year. Uh, the league expanded from from 10 teams to, to 12 teams. How, for you, at this point, how would you describe this this regular season overall for for the Red Stars? Long, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Shortly, long would be my my feelings <laughs> towards the whole thing. Um, but I think compared to last year, finally playing and getting minutes and being able to be um, a leader on the team has been my favorite part of this year. And despite like all the adversity and we've had a lot of changes, just personnel injuries, which happens all the time. But I feel like this year was a lot. Um, and so I think it was fun, but also challenging to kind of step into those roles. Um, and so with a long season, I think it also helped kind of finding your way and then kind of being comfortable with the people you're playing with. And so I think finally near the end of the season, we kind of were starting to get people back that we were missing in the beginning. And so I think we're finally starting to get this gel together. So I guess that's the beauty of a long season. You kind of got time to figure it out. Plenty of time to get in your groove and, and get things moving and, and, Tatum, you didn't just step up this year for the Red Stars. You were the most consistent defender for Chicago. Uh, 22 games this year. You started every single one of them. Um, and you just talked about finding your groove, whether it's the players around you and, and having that consistent playing and getting really consistent minutes on the pitch. How did you personally um, improve throughout this year that you noticed? Yeah, well, first, I think I was... I've always played in a four back. So going into a yeah. three back this year was super um, challenging, but it's also something like once you get familiar with it, it's kind of like, okay, you can throw me in this formation. You can throw me in this formation. So kind of like building confidence, um, being in different spots was really helpful. Um, I think finally finding some confidence in myself on the field was a big step for me. I think a little background I got injured my last game of college. And so my whole year before being able to try out for the Red Stars was like rehab year. That was just a lot of like, it was just mentally exhausting. It was like, am I going to get a chance to try out for this team or am I doing this for nothing? And then finally making it was like, okay, now you're here. You can, you need to build on this. And so building on that confidence this year was a huge step for me to finally feel comfortable and I feel like when I feel comfortable, then I'm allowed to be more vocal and then I'm help more helpful on the field to my teammates. So I think it all kind of comes together. You know, looking looking ahead a little bit um, to this this weekend coming up with the quarterfinal, Chicago's entering their seventh consecutive postseason. To, it's a massive accomplishment. That's um, huge. And it came down to the very, it came down to the nitty gritty, right? Yeah. The fire. Um, you all weren't without, you know, dramatics, uh, yeah. you know, sort of setting the scenes, mm -hmm. uh, but it was a convincing win to two zero win over angel city. Um, I remember being at that game and um, getting to speak a little bit with Alyssa Nair and Vanessa Di Bernardo after the game um, and sort of the scenario that was in play for you all yeah. that for you're one of the newer members of, of this team compared to some of the veterans who have been around for some time and it was a little bit of a different scenario Chicago has often found themselves in the playoff mix and mostly competing for seating but there was the possibility of like elimination on the line uh, in this game you talk about maybe going going through that game the emotions of it, the build up to it and, and coming out with the win. Yeah. I think a few weeks before we kind of had a team meeting and we're like, we're in this spot where it's, it's not a bad spot. We can still control kind of where we go from here, but it's also not where the team has kind of been used to sitting, going into these postseason playoffs and stuff. And there are girls on the team that have been in the situation where they haven't made playoffs. And so hearing them be like, I know some of you haven't been in this position, but it, 
it's a really shitty feeling. <laughs> like you don't want to be in that position. And so I think that was a few weeks before the last game. And so I think trainings, we all kind of went in, we're like, well, we don't want this to be our last couple of weeks of training. Like we don't want to like have this last home game against like Angel City and that be it. So I think that was kind of more of a shock to us. It's like, okay, you better get it together. or You're really going to be sitting at home watching other teams play. So I think that was, it was a good point in the season a few weeks ago to be like, okay, we need this, this realization now. So I like kind of buckle up. We're it's time. <laughs> buckle up. It's like, time to no go. Places to be. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. And, and it was a long season, right? Like um, a balanced season as well. So as you head into this postseason for the NWSL and the quarterfinals, you're going to play a San Diego wave team, a team that you've already seen twice throughout the regular season, but Hey, that was a long time ago. Um, do you, what do you remember about those first two meetings against San Diego? One in California and then, of course, one at home. But now this this playoff match, you'll be traveling to San Diego. So what do you remember about those first two meetings? Yeah, the first one, I feel like we were so excited. We're like, oh, my gosh, we're going to San Diego. Like, this is so fun. We're, finally, we're going to the West Coast. So I think that was there was a lot of excitement going into that game. And I think. If I remember, there were a lot of people that were kind of not playing normal positions. I feel like Zoe Morris was in like the six, Hilly was in the 10. So like yeah. looking back on that game, I'm like, I just like, don't know if I want to even consider that because it wasn't, it's not who we are now, but like, again, it was like the first game where we were trying to figure everything out and how to put pieces into places that sometimes are normal. Um, and then the last Soldier Field game was also just so cool because the environment was exciting. And I think we really, I thought it was a good game. I think it was a really fair matchup. I feel like we had good opportunities. Um, and so I think even given that was um, how, a month ago, however long ago, um, the stuff we've imp- we have improved on and grown on, I think looking back on the other two games, it's like, at least the first one, like an unrecognizable team. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, um, sp- that, that last meeting, I think that you're referring to the one at soldier field, uh, looking at that specifically, it sort of felt like a game and even talking, you know, to, to some players afterwards that it sort of maybe felt like one that got away a little bit, uh, yeah. you know, in terms of a, a result, you know, it was, I, I believe a narrow loss for, for you guys, uh, snapped a streak at that point. Um, one zero, I think was a scoreline, uh, having the player advantage at one point. So when, when you're looking at maybe that, that match specifically in terms of maybe even your own performance, maybe I'm not going to ask you to judge the performance of your teammates, but like, what is something that you maybe want to look on improving heading into a, a quarterfinal match? Yeah, I think for sure. I think in the last game um, or the San Diego, the last time we played them, they scored in the first half and it was off like kind of a cross in the box, a long ball. And I think we've really kind of narrowed down on specific defensive things since then. So balls over the top, being clean defensively on crosses and defending inside the box, which slipped away from me a little last game, a little PK, but you know, (laughs) we grew up. And then, um, so I think being able to look at the specific things that people kind of got at us for in last games and specifically like the long ball that was over the top, um, those type of things were easy to kind of regroup on and practice and kind of be like, okay, these are how teams want to try to beat us, get around us. Let's be that much cleaner to try to make them think of other ways to beat us. Yeah. It's, it's helpful in the last game because it was one that we were disappointed about especially given like being in soldier field type of thing oh now you get revenge that's that's how you get to look at it (laughs) and head into this one for sure um you talked about this a little bit how how the team came together a few weeks ago towards the end of the regular season and said hey we don't want our season to end we don't want this to be the final time that we step on the field together in competition now as you've already entered into the postseason you're here you've had training this week you'll have a few more before you head out to the west coast what is really the energy around the team at this point now that you've made it into the postseason but you still have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. I think the mindset right now is to go there and kind of put a full performance of everything we've done this season. I think we've had games where we have 
performed really well and executed mm -hmm. the things that we've wanted to, and then games that we've kind of dipped off and like haven't passed how we wanted to or kept possession. So I think right now we are really wanting to put everything together. And I think now would be a great time for that to happen. So I think the mindset is just like really focusing in on practice this week, um, being able to be mentally healthy, physically healthy, every, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then kind of put a full performance together, I think would be the goal. All right. We're going to have to stay tuned and uh, we'll see what all works out for, for Chicago. Listen, Tana, we like to close out with a little bit of fun whenever we do um, interviews and have guests on uh, the show with us. And, and a lot of times uh, we'll typically ask like, what's a, like a go-to beverage order, whether it's coffee or not coffee. Uh, but we're going to, I want to change it up a little bit and put, we're both right. natives to Chicago. And so I wanted to put a little bit of a spin on it for, for you and I, I'm going to ask you one, maybe soccer related one. Uh, you know, if, is there something that you need to do specifically to sort of unwind from a game and what what is that in sort of your your post game uh, unwind routine mm. post game we'll see like by the time i get home post game yeah, what I'm yeah. Gonna do. yeah i think i need to actually just sit on the couch i think <laughs> i randomly will turn on like i randomly will rewatch like Shit's Creek or the office yes. or something. And I just turn that on and then I just need to like sit there, maybe even look at my phone, but I'm like, I don't even want to read anything right now. Like I just want to play with my kittens and then <laughs> try to eat something at that point. It's like, what do you even do? It's like 1130. I haven't eaten dinner. <laughs> that type of thing. It's kind of like get your life together at that point. <laughs> so kid kittens, plural. Yes. To Two, I'm about to say two, three, four. Are you a cat lady already at this point? <laughs> at, at this point, yes. So I'm like, can I get another? I don't know. <laughs> hey, hey, if you got two, why not three, right? That's how it starts. Be careful. At that point, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So look, for, for folks who are, are watching this, who, who maybe don't go here, who are not, uh, you know, Chicagoland natives or anything, uh, you know, and maybe they somehow find themselves in, 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 in the great suburb of, of Orland Park. What is like a spot that you want to recommend to them that they have to hit up uh, mm -hmm. before making their exit? Oh, goodness. That Do is they just hard. need to go to the mall? Do they just need to go to Orland Square Mall? <laughs> <laughs> just go walk around Orland Square Mall, do a couple laps, and <laughs> you'll feel right at home. <laughs> I mean, honestly, besides the mall, I feel like that's a very fair answer. I mean, besides like the random food spots, they just put a Canes up. If you're into Canes, that was exciting. Right oh, so Canes are spreading across the country right now. We just got yeah. one in Philadelphia. It's crazy. They're popping up everywhere. Look at that. Look at that. So uh, I guess go to Canes and then go to the mall. <laughs> Is there a very uh, Chicago specific thing that you, that you like to do, uh, you know, with, with, with your teammates more central to the city? Um, in the city, I think we we like to check out the coffee spots, I think, and even going to the lake and just, just sitting there is so nice. I mean, it's the waves of, it's like, can take you somewhere else, like just being there and being able to relax. I mean, even the last couple of weeks here, I feel like we, we've been able to soak up some fun weather. So yes. I feel like anytime we can go outside and not like be playing soccer is exciting for us. <laughs> Excellent. I love, we look, I love unashamed promotion of our lake beaches yeah. <laughs> go go sit your butt in that sand i'm That's not right. making any comments about these <laughs> lake beaches listen Thank you so much, uh, Tatum, for, for joining us today on Attack and Third. Uh, we always like to thank our listeners at the end of the episode. So thanks, everybody, for, for tuning in and uh, joining along. Uh, best of luck and congratulations on making uh, the postseason once more. A quick reminder to everyone, you can catch Tatum and the Chicago Red Stars against San Diego Wave FC in the first round of playoffs this Sunday, October 16th on CBS Sports Network. We'll be back with a full weekend preview for Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Tatum Malazzo. This was Attacking Third.